Okay, here we go. This has been like two weeks in the making, by the way, Jax, because I thought I was supposed to talk to you last week. Wow. And I we had the dates wrong, I guess. So I'm yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you're here today. We did it. Yes. We're out here. <laughs> with Low with Jax on uh, on the Low Show. Super Delicious. excited to to chat with you. I have so many questions. I I love you so much. You're just a a ray of sunshine. Oh, um, but Thanks. first, I just want to say congratulations on everything so far. And um, girl, I mean, you are just on like a rocket ship right now. How, <laughs> how are you feeling? The rocket ship. Oh man, uh, I I am I'm a little tired because a lot of travel right now. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm on like a, an Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore kick where I watch all their movies on the plane. And um, I am so, so more than bubbly inside. This is like the coolest thing as a songwriter to ever experience. Your song on the radio is like your actual dream. And yeah. um, the craziest part is like, I'm getting to see all these amazing videos and hear all these amazing stories just out of like a three minute thing that I wrote. So it's like, it's just awesome. Like, yeah. it's just so awesome. My parents are losing their mind. <laughs> like, I bet. I yeah, bet. it's They're overwhelming, like but it's amazing. It's like, it's like a lot to process, but it's so freaking cool. Like, this is just like the actual songwriting dream. So. And it's the dream. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm so happy for you because I can tell that it's just like, it's um you know it's a little overwhelming but it's yeah. but it's good it's like a good overwhelming no it's, feeling, you can't right? ever ask for anything more I, I do think like after a certain point right I, like it stops really stops becoming about the like numbers and it, yeah it starts to become like oh my gosh like this was my dream to write songs and you know other people would connect with them and like it would help in some way and people could relate to something and that's just like such a crazy feet because you, awesome. when you write a song you're like you you hope right you're like fingers crossed maybe this is just me <laughs> right yeah it's just your own personal testimony or story and then what if people do connect that's actually the reason you make art so it's freaking wild it's so awesome well speaking we're, wild <laughs> we're so glad to have you on the show we're obviously celebrating you know the success so far of your latest single victoria's secret which has such an awesome awesome background story but but also you know an, an awesome meaning and um you know I, i'm sure at this point everybody is pretty familiar about you know how the song came about it's the girl that you babysat she was getting bullied and you're like you know what? no <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna put a stop to that yeah and uh, i'm gonna you know write a song for my millions of followers on tiktok and it's gonna <laughs> go viral and you're gonna be the coolest girl at school now i look that's actually she's got to be the most popular and it's funny like when after a, a day after we posted that video together she went off to sleepaway camp so she had no idea like her face was just on the news and stuff oh like that gosh. it was like can the counselor tell her can somebody tell her and then like she started hearing the song at camp and she was like wait a second that was the uh <laughs> like yeah no she's freaking cool like at this point i started babysitting her before the quarantine just to like pay for groceries right sure, and yeah then like during the quarantine things got crazy on tiktok and then when i came back to la because i was staying with my parents in, in new york came back to la she was like my friends don't believe when i keep, I keep saying my babysitter is tiktok famous like they don't believe me and i'm like well come over we could just write a song about it and like post it and then from that point on chelsea and i have like her mom dropped us off in my new babysitting gig with basically like TikToking and eating candy and like <laughs> while her mom gets to take a break. <laughs> I love it. And we just write songs together and post it. So. That's so cool. And you know, it's it's a cool way, you know, she's gonna obviously remember this for the rest of her life. But yeah. you know, the awesome. song has has been so positive for for so many people. I know the intention was to make her feel good, mm -hmm. but you know, now that it's such a cultural phenomenon, you know, what are your hopes for this song moving forward in oh, the I, world well first of all thank you that's like yeah. very high praise yeah. and i i mean it's interesting to call it a cultural phenomenon because it's like i'm definitely not saying a new thing um but it's really cool that it's in like a commercial place right now like i don't think you hear that kind of stuff in the media much you just hear it kind of there is a body positivity movement so kind of just hopping on board something that's been said for so many years now right but right. like for my intention was definitely not just like for Chelsea. It was like, I did, I do obviously have a, like 
over 11 million followers on the app. And most of those followers are girls Chelsea's age. So I never felt like I was in a place personally to talk about what I've been through with my body and what I go through every day today, right? Like, because I am not in the best place <laughs> to this day. I mean, I'm better than I was, right? Sure. Emotionally, mm -hmm. but this was like the first time I felt I had a responsibility to use the platform and for girls like Chelsea and Chelsea herself and kids her age, because that's when it started for me. Right. Like getting all wrapped up and comparing my body to like super edited photos. One body type was all I got in the early 2000s. And I wanted that thigh gap. I was like eating ice cubes at in the cafeteria, like to as a snack, you know, I, I at one point it was it got really scary. And I was, you know, I'm naturally like, you know, over 120 pounds, right? But I got under, I was almost under 90 at one point and it got like mm. just terrifying, right? And I thought at the time I was like gorgeous. I was like, this is it, like I'm finally on track. And it's so sick to think that like, I never felt beautiful in my skin and to this day, I don't. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, it was, it would be irresponsible of me to not say something and try to prevent that from happening to our next generation of little, little CEOs. So. Absolutely. No, and, 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 and very well said. And, and, you know, as a, as a female too, that grew up in the late nineties, early two thousands, I saw the same mm -hmm. imagery that you saw. No you weird know? time. That's a it weird a era. Weird, it was a weird era, girl. Yeah. I talk about and, a lot, but that's like a crazy era, actually. Like if you think about it, it you could like companies very, they could have, included multiple body types and it had oh, some, yeah. some level of diversity right but like and still you know it could have been sexy like they could have made lots of lots of lots of money like you actually mm -hmm. be marketing to more people that way right mm -hmm. but Absolutely. the one thing that's better and more of a money maker for very rich corporations than like love would be you know capitalizing on like pain and, and illness and insecurity so that's where it like becomes that's when Victoria's Secret went from a ballad in the studio to a pop punk, sarcastic, yeah. goofy song where I wanted to take it back. So I was feeling more angry. Yeah, no, absolutely. The lyrics. <laughs> I wasn't like, yeah. ah. it was like, what? I can't believe I just wrote Thunder Thighs out on paper. And that was like a thing <laughs> that I was saying. And like, no way, like, this is so stupid. You're start, start Wikipedia Googling like, the actual CEOs of all these companies, not just Victoria's Secret, they're all no, just like yeah. these like so many other ones. little old men like sketching out here is the perfect body. Yeah, it's, like, it's almost like <laughs> it's almost like predatory, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, and like not almost it is. <laughs> and just and just so just so sad. Like that's the only word I can really like describe like that mm -hmm. time period of of beauty standards. It's just yeah. You know, it's it was one thing, like you said, and and also that one thing wasn't healthy. No. You know what well, I mean? Like, or maybe for some girls, like, and then it's no knock on girls who are like I wrote that line, "Skin and bones with big boobs." And originally, it's like funny. It was skin and bones, skin and bones, and big boobs, right? Mm -hmm. And that and and width were like very different to me because like I found that every time I lost an insane amount of weight, like my boobs got smaller and smaller, right? Mm -hmm. Because like where I gained my it's weight, always the first boobs, thing to right? go. Well, for yeah, exactly. So every time I felt like I'm almost getting there, I'm like, well, wait, no, I'm not because my boobs are not big enough. And it's like, you know, and but that was just that's me personally. But there are body types that are very skinny and and thin, and they have big boobs, and that's beautiful too. The problem was that the if that's only one body type is being sold and marketed. And sub subliminally and not so subliminally, just kind of shoved in your face at all times as the idea that this is the beautiful thing. That's when you really start to like not want to be your body anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's yeah. when you start to warp the idea of yourself and you have this body dysmorphia looking in the mirror and being like, all these things are wrong and not that. So it's, it's, I I'm sorry you went through the early 2000s. No, at least, and, like, at least it's a little different now. Like, that's it is. Thank, I'm... thank God. And, and, yeah. and luckily for me, I had a good support system around me and, you know, the self esteem and everything. Like, you, yeah. you, you, there, there's always ebbs and flows with that. Like, there's definitely some insecurities that I still have, even, it's you know, at, at never 32 goes years old. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I think it's so special that you are putting this out there and using your platform to you know let everybody know hey like <laughs> it's okay to be insecure about certain yeah. things but know that this isn't the end-all be-all 
And, you know, I, I feel like you're definitely creating an opportunity for not just young women, but, but young men too, to yeah. have, positive, you know, body images and, 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 lift, positive and lift their sisters up and their mothers yeah. up, you know, like or their daughters. That too. Yeah, yeah. No, that's another crazy one. It's like, I didn't even, you know, I posted for one reason, but people took it and made it their own. And I got all these like crazy stories that I'd never even, they didn't even cross my mind, you know, like I, there are so many men out there as well that like were told that they had to be masculine and couldn't express if they were feeling insecure mm -hmm. about their body, you know, and they, right. and they were told they had to have a six pack in this like V thing sure, and like, yeah. you know, be muscly and macho. And that's just like also really messed up. Like, yeah. You know, look at look at us just crushing beauty standards. You know, and, and, and you know what? And here's the thing, though. It isn't really. It, I'm ha I'm so excited to bridge some sort of a gap, right? But like, because there's a, this this influencer thing, right? But we like didn't invent this. We are actually just on. A, there's already a movement, right? Yeah. Like the like the problem was I never would have gotten that, and neither would you at our age. I'm yeah. happy to hop on the movement, but I can't take credit for it. Like, yeah, that's no, literally for sure, but... been, people have been saying it for a long time. So hey, but hopping on the train is totally fine too. <laughs> yeah, good so, train to hop on. I'll, yeah, I'll take yeah. that. <laughs> I I love that. And um... my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I never even actually gave my therapist royalties for this song, which she did. No, so. that's good. I love it. That's so Darn good. Darn, Deborah. But you're so obviously <laughs> the song took off on your TikTok, and your TikTok is so great. You have so many amazing videos on there. Um, so many good ones with like your parents. <laughs> yeah. uh, it seems like you you and your your parents have a really yeah. great relationship. It's chaotic, but it's what, we're, we're what do, very what, close. What would you say um, the best advice that they've they've ever given you as as mom and dad? There's a couple of things. There's one that my dad drilled home, and it was just always the golden rule: like treat others the way you want to be treated. And that's yeah. actually applying like really hard in my life right now because I'm all of a sudden randomly experiencing like fan interactions, mm -hmm. and and I'm having not always great days. You know, sure. like I'm t like I'm traveling a lot, and sometimes I can't even keep my eyes open. And sometimes it's just like I to be this and awake and happy, like it's really not easy. But I remember like interactions I've had with some celebrities I looked up to that kind of really let me down and broke my heart about being I didn't want I don't want that to be the case. And I want to no. make sure that their experience with me uh, is is a nice one and a, and a fun one because I didn't want to be treated that way. So the golden rule is a big one. That's good. That's a good one to, to, to pass on to. It's a classic. Um, yeah. I think one of my favorite videos, though, on your TikTok is <laughs> the one where you got your wisdom teeth removed. Look at it. It's and still here. Is it still there? Uh, no, it's gone. Know. It's not. Oh, okay. It's actually out. Like, the tooth is not. It wasn't wisdom teeth. <laughs> like, what it was is like it doing? Doing a gnarly surgery. My, oh. my a root canal from when I was 12. Oh, had no. been infected for a really long time into my face and it was fractured in half and they had to do an emergency tooth surgery so it was like not just laughing gas it was like full anesthesia <laughs> like oh i went my down gosh. and they were like oh, oh Jax, you need to be like in new york in two days you got a brand thing and this and that and i was like i'm going under <laughs> i gotta like, get this thing out of my head <laughs> they were like putting me on cold soup for like days oh, no. But yeah, but no, I was your <laughs> your reaction to like waking up to selena gomez and like wanting to be selena's friend like yeah. i feel like a lot of women have felt that yeah but i guess my question is has selena reached out to you since yeah. that video i mean not like we haven't like spoken personally but she commented on it oh and okay she, and she said i adore you and i just literally oh. peed my pants in sheer embarrassment and i was like oh god this is the first thing she says <laughs> one day we'll be friends but don't go on why <laughs> she's, yeah she'll remember i think she's gonna remember that for a while i would love to see like some sort of collaboration with you guys whether it's one of those like sneaky tiktoks that you do I where wish. you're like doing something and they hop in or you know maybe as a guest on her um her set her chef show that's coming out Oh on my Netflix? god, I, that's a great idea. If my manager is listening to this, help yeah. her my label you gotta, or something. I'm going to try and set that up. She I know you're um <laughs> I know you're a big charcuterie fan. I was I was kind of yeah. stalking some of your other interviews and yeah. you you and I have that in common. Um Eat. so I think you should bring a charcuterie to Selena's uh that's chef genius. show. Wouldn't that be great? It would have to be that. I'd have to yeah. like, crack cheese 
macaroni, macaroni and cheese because I like that's all I really know is char charcuterie. It's like the easiest thing. You got to go to the good, <laughs> the good section in the grocery store for those yes. cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> that aged cheddar. I love it. I love it so much. Well, I do want to play just a quick game with you before we hop off. Um, it's called it. Love It or Leave It, the okay. early 2000s trend, because oh. I know you're a nostalgia fan, late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Um, but before we hop into that, what's next for you after Victoria's Secret? Do you have anything on the way? Is there anything we can look forward to? Oh, yeah, I have so many songs because yeah. I, that's really all I do all day. So <laughs> I have a bunch <laughs> that I'm like super excited about, like a bajillion that I wrote. And then out of that bajillion, like a thousand that I'd be okay with people hearing. And out of that thousand, I have like 10 that I love, right? I love it. So I'll have to narrow narrow my children down and just say, okay, these are the babies. Here's the best ones. I hope. So yeah, I'd like to be on tour soon because I just want to meet everyone at this point. It's really like, So hard definitely... To Definitely new music and yeah. the road. And I want to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> In my little Girl, shirt. I know. I love I love that you're <laughs> representing today. I'm so here for that. Um, all right. So let's let's hop into this. Okay. So it's the love it or leave it. Late 90s, early 2000s trends. Are you ready? Are you ready, okay. kids? <laughs> Bleached tips. Love it or leave it. Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> I have my, I mean, my brother had son in. Just oh yeah! Oh my God! I use sun in too. Jesus, that damaged Not the great. hair so bad. Not great. Um, how about biker shorts? Uh oh, love it. Yeah, yeah. love it. Th those have made like a resurgence. Yeah. I, I have them. A hundred. Yeah. Them, yeah. Uh, chain wallets. I, I'm gonna say leave it, but fanny packs are good. <laughs> okay, so leave the chain wallets. Keep the fanny yeah, packs. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about bucket hats? Oh, I love it. Love it. Leave it. Yeah. Uh, how about boy bands? Love it. Yeah. Totally. Love it forever. <laughs> this one, this one is a little uh polarizing, oh, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> cucumber melon body spray. Oh, I'm gonna have to leave it. I'm not a big cucumber person though. <laughs> I, I do like ooh. I just got a hair in my mouth. Yeah, no, I mean, I have to leave it. <laughs> I remember that though. From yeah, I do. The body works. It was like the juniper uh, yeah. something and like yeah, the yeah. berry blossom. I'll say I love the like the hand sanitizers that were like flavored. Uh, okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll love the hand sanitizers, but we'll okay. leave the body spray in the early yeah. 2000s. Not um, how about disposable cameras? Oh, love it. Have yeah. it everywhere. Best. Yeah. <laughs> T9 texting. Who uh leave it. <laughs> <laughs> now we can just like speak into our phones and tell Yeah, you know what? There's too many options for us now. <laughs> I was I was good at that though. Like in school, like I could like go yeah. underneath the desk and like not even think about it. Yeah, it's bad for driving is the only reason I say leave it. Because I'm true. like That's I have true. bad habits with that stuff. So <laughs> okay, last one before we let you go. Polly Pockets. Love it. Are they back? No, they're not back, but hopefully. Oh well, at least I don't know. You're back, I have to say. So get your tongue back. Geez. They're in stores now at a local Target near you. Hey, hey there you <laughs> go. <laughs> Well, Jack, thank you so much for spending some time with us. I, I heard you might have a little little treat for us to, to send you off with. I can sing for you. Yeah, let's hear <laughs> it. Let's hear I it. said it like that. <laughs> Jack's okay. everybody. This is Victoria's Secret. Okay, it's happening. <clears throat> God, I wish somebody would have told me when I was younger that all bodies aren't the same. Photoshop, itty bitty models on magazine covers. Told me I was overweight. I stopped eating. What a bummer. Can't have carbs in a hot girl summer. If I could go back and tell myself when I was younger, I'd say, I know Victoria's Secret, and girl, you wouldn't believe she's an old man who lives in Ohio, making money off of girls like me, cashing in on body issues, selling skin and bones with big boobs. I know Victoria's Secret, she was made up by a dude, dude. Victoria was made up by a dude, a dude. Victoria was made up by a 
I wish somebody would have told me that thighs of thunder meant normal human thighs and all the pressure I was under to lose my appetite and fight the cellulite games like every night if I could go back and tell myself when I was younger I'd say I know Victoria's secret, and girl, you wouldn't believe she's an old man who lives in Ohio, making money off of girls like me, cashing in on body issues, selling skin and bones with big boobs. I know Victoria's secret with she was made up by a dude. She was made up by a dude, a dude. Victoria was made up by no Victoria's secret. And girl, you wouldn't believe she's an old man who lives in Ohio, making money off of girls like me, cashing in on body issues, selling skin and bones with big boots. I know Victoria's secret She was never made for me Thank you Yay, Jax, thank you so much Thank You're you so <laughs> We appreciate you taking some time Thanks for letting me see boobs so much on your show yes, absolutely <laughs> Good luck with everything And next time you are in Louisville Let us Louisville. know we got to hang out. We, we got to hang gotta out so up. you guys can roast me for saying Louisville. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I love you guys. And I can't wait. We you love you, girl. Love you, dude. Have a good one. You too. <laughs>